The day I found out I got hired was the most emotional day of my life. My wife started crying a little bit, which, you know, set me off. And then uh, we hugged and she gave me a card and I read it and it was, the whole thing was filled out, how proud I am of you. And on the other side of that card, it said, and also coming June 2016 or 15, baby Boyd. I called my mom first and I was like, we're, we're going to San Diego. We're going to San Diego. I finally did it. And uh, cause I had told them since I was a little kid that I was gonna move down here. Well, I was home with my mom. So first person I told was her. And then I called my dad as soon as I could. It's giving me chills thinking about it. I, it was the best feeling of my life. I opened it there in the parking lot, screamed and yelled and hooted and hollering because I was so excited that I finally... In the parking lot of the... Of the post office, yeah. So I got a lot of weird looks from some people because I was extremely excited over something they had no idea about. Opened it up, kind of ripped it open in the uh, post office and saw what it was, read it probably ten times just, just to make sure and I don't really believe it at the time. It was definitely like, I'm like trying not to cry like in the parking lot because like people could see me and stuff, but it's, at the same time I just didn't even care. It was just, it was just a surreal feeling. And uh, it was really emotional. I mean, uh, I started welling up with tears and I'm like, I, if I, I had reached the light at the end of the tunnel. And I've already ran three blocks from the restaurant, so I probably ran faster back to the restaurant to open it with my wife. And I, I, I feel bad because I really couldn't wait to open it in front of her. So I opened it up outside and was like kind of reading it. And I was already crying, but she didn't, know, she didn't know at the time that there were tears of joy. So she's looking at me and I'm looking at her. Her eyes are tearing up and I couldn't hold it any longer. I just told her I got the package. I'm in. And uh, he turned around and out came this, this, this envelope. It looked like gold, this beautiful envelope. And I, I grabbed that letter. And I turned around my son, he was the first person I saw. And I turned around and just gave him that hug and didn't want to let go. And I was like, Daddy did it. Something that was really unique was I spoke with my wife, I spoke with my parents, and I immediately went to call three different firefighters from San Diego that had helped me. And I think that speaks so much <clears throat> to what this career is. To have that quick of a connection, you know, wife, parents, then immediately firefighters that I didn't know a year earlier, but it helped me get to that moment and wanting to share it with them. It, that said to me, you're on the right path here. I, my house burned down when I was a kid, you know, so one of the darkest days of my life, who showed up? Firefighters showed up. Firefighters have saved my father's life so many times I can't even begin to tell you. So all these things that have been done for me by the fire service, it was important and intriguing for me to be able to not only pay homage and respect, but also give back. And that's why I've chosen this. The first phone call I made was probably to my, my dad. And uh, obviously in light of recent circumstances, uh, it's pretty important that I made that phone call to him. And, and we're all good now. We're all good now.
I remember as a little kid in kindergarten that um, we took a community field trip to Station 7. I didn't really know them. They were complete strangers to me. When they greeted me and the rest of the class was with a smile, that's what made me uh, want to become a firefighter. Being a firefighter is not just riding a fire engine, it's not just wearing the cool gear, not just like looking cool in the movies. It's actually giving back to the community. You're seeing somebody at their, their most difficult point, one of them, probably one of the most difficult points in their life, and you're there to make that situation better. And so when I see someone in need, it's just an automatic reaction um, to just try to help them, you know, in any way I can. I think in a city like San Diego, it's truly unique because you're surrounded by so much service. I mean, the, the men and women who have come through here literally make everything possible for us. You know, we run down onto the waterfront and you're looking out on aircraft carriers and naval training centers and helicopters flying over and this city appreciates service because so much of the city serves. So to be able to say that I'm part of that team that's here to help these people in, in this place that we live in and we're a part of and that we work in is a good feeling. The big grand scheme of things, it's, it's one big family and one big brother and sisterhood that we're gonna be part of the rest of our lives. To be part of this, is, it's an amazing thing. Like I said, it's an honor and privilege just to be here. Yeah, I can't, I'm still pinching myself, can't believe I'm here. And they are inside your head. You got a voice that sounds. You won't get past this one. You won't win your freedom. It's like a constant war. And you want to settle that score. Put it in your paws, though. Feel the way to live in. It's redemption season. Don't live the young at heart. She is still a brand new start. We're involved in breathing to live a life of freedom. Oh, to so everyone who's hit their limit. It's not over yet. It's not over yet.
it's it's fun to be here every day. Like I, I get a kick out of being here around these guys every day. Twenty years, you're still hanging out with these guys. Sure. And I don't really know how to explain it to anybody. It's just the only way I could explain it to uh, somebody who doesn't know is you'd have to experience it to understand it for yourself. All I see is blue uniforms. I, I don't see anything else. I see my family out there, you know, family in blue.